think they must they have it then. Right. Well, the, the first the first part of my, my Cumbrian talk was on the um, area around the Colbeck Fells. Um, this one is the, the wider area of Cumbria, from um, say Keswick down to Egremont, and uh, Egremont across to Coniston, Shap out to Hilton Mine, which is on the edges of Cumbria, up to um, Smallclough Mine, which is, again, one of the very last places in Cumbria before it comes to Northumberland, and finishing up back just to the, the on the east side of the, the, um, the Eden Valley. So the first one we're going to come to now is Force Crag Mine, which is a was worked for uh, Lennon and Barrites um, back in the 1800s. Um, this is the, the track into it um, from Braithwaite Village. But Braithwaite Village is this little place here and you park your cars somewhere in this area and a little lay-by and a car park and walk up this track. It's about two and a half miles long. Um, it's pretty flat all the way in. And I did this twice when my daughter was six years old in 1976. And we, I, I was there for a two weeks holiday. This one, the first place they ever collected from. Um, and the, the mine itself is this, well, the, the, the shafts and, and remains of shafts all the way through. Um, but the actual, this is the main area of the, the actual the mine workings. Um, as you walk up the track, you come to the top of the crack and uh, uh, you've got this the eel crags at the back. This, is a, this one goes up the side to another range of hills where there's a, a, a mine, they call it cobalt mine, where they, they found apparently erythrite. Um, but the actual mines are at the end of this, this valley. At the end of the valley, you've got the, the dump start to repair. And this was taken in 1976. These, these photographs, are, a lot of them are from my, I've transferred them from 35 millimeter slides. So they aren't as good as I'd like them to be, but that's about as good as we can get from, 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 the, from those days. That's the old building. Um, I've got that picture. I've got a, photograph which was taken in 1908 on an old glass slide and there was a photographer in, in Keswick at the time he photographed a lot of the old mines and did this mine and this wall the, the wall at the front this wall here is a, a group of miners sitting on it having the photographs taken and the building looks just the same now as it did then that's a hundred, over 100 years ago but the, 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 there's a really big worked out area behind there's levels and shafts and gone all the way up through. Um, let's look in the other direction at the, the old mine building. And back in the, about 1987, there was a group of people who opened up um, the, the, the number O level um, for working, they were working barrites again. Um, and I think they've done a bit of specimen hunting as well. That's an underground shot when we were we were allowed to go in on one level and come out on another one. And uh, we, were, we were led through by some people there. And while we were in there, we met this group who were up from um, Doncaster or somewhere. And they were doing some research on the, on, on the, 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 the mining techniques. And um, on this particular day, they had what they call the, the uh, Widowmaker drill working, which is this, this air compressed steam which is why the, you've got this glow everywhere, misty glow. Um, but that's the number O level, which was the one they were working their, their stuff from that came out of this ad at level on this track to a big grizzly um, rock breaker and down into the plant. And they had a part, part of the plant still working. Um, that's looking down from this cobalt mine on the far side of the hill. It's a lousy photograph. I won't dwell too long on that. But you can see I'm, uh, I've got a fair way up to get the picture. Um, I couldn't, I never, I, I didn't actually ever find the cobalt mine, but apparently I was about two meters away from it behind me. And we had to climb up this slope from the bottom up this hill, then slide back down again. And uh, that was quite an interesting day. What do you get? You get the, um, this is pyromorphite, a brown pyromorphite. I've never actually found this myself, but it came from one, one area of the mine. Um, uh, and I never actually got into it to find where it was. 
that, that was what just one of the, the, the rare things from there. Um, close up of that. The main thing is the spalerite and the galena on the side, all right? And again, the spalerite with the side, all right, in, in patches running through it. Again, a, 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 a close up of one of the spalerite faces, very bright, very hard to get a picture of. Um, this I thought was something different, but it's just it's just um, galena coat with a with a pyrite coating on it, and this actually did lay on the the grill on the top of the crusher. I managed to save this specimen before it went through the crusher, and uh, that, that's quite nice. Um, galena and ciderite, ciderite by itself in these little rhombohedral saddle shaped crystals. Again. And gypsum. Gypsum is everywhere. The, it's all secondary to, and it's growing on the, uh, the rocks and the deads inside the tunnels. Um, pyrite, a little bit of iron pyrite in the, in the material. If you come across another, back towards Keswick a little way, the next valley over is the, the um, Newlands Valley. And um, there's a series of mines and there's the Stonycroft smelter which is this little part here is the, is the smelter. You park on this little area um, here, which is um, Ersey Car Farm. This mine here is barrel mine. I'll get back to that one in a minute or two. Uh, but you, so you park here, walk up this track, and you collect on this dump, which is just here. This does go up, and there's a level that goes in here somewhere, but the cobalt mine is up here. And this is the other valley over where Force Crag is just down this side. Um, I must say that the, these Google Earth pictures are very good, but it doesn't have, there's no perspective on what the walk or the climb is like. So this was the, the easy way up to the mine. Um, I actually did this about five, four or five weeks ago, and it was a lot harder than it took that day, 2001. They put this, I'm not sure if this is a, a, a new-ish system put in for um, Compress the water down for the to work the pumps on um, the machinery on the on the smelter, or whether it's um, a water board, a, a later water board thing. But this is the the this comes down through this gully and on down through, and then there's the dumps and the smelter dump is just there. Um, this is what they that, that this is they being used what they call canyoneering, and um, on the day we were there, there's about seven or eight groups of twenty. Um, children and adults coming through, and they throw themselves into these into this stream in various places, and then slide down on the backside from pool to pool, and they call that fun. And they they think, and they pay about sixty pound a day for the pleasure of it each. That's the dump itself, um, the big dump at the at the Stonycroft Guild, the smell. And we get all sorts of copper secondaries on there, um, lead, lead and copper secondaries. It's getting harder and harder to find material now. Um, very, very few bits. I think I brought, kept about two pieces from, from this year's trip. That's looking a bit more down the valley. So there's the back down here. And you, you have to be really careful now because you're collecting on this slope. And a lot of the stuff when you're digging holes in that runs down in the, anyone in the, in the gully beneath it. A um, couple of the photographs, and I've got to put this down somewhere. No, wrong one. I said it's got out of the way. Um, yeah, so, yeah, um, spangolite. The spangolites here form as these little tiny blue lozenges. Very hard to photograph. They are very small. Um, very strange on, on, on the, uh, the, 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 the slag. Um, Codolite, little, little blue sprays. Falls and sprays all scattered all through. Um, Langite, that's a, that one's a little bit melted, but the, the, they, they do form as nice crystals as well. Um, don't know what that one is. I haven't got that one sorted out not yet. It's, it's got some sort of hexagonal form that's probably some, some lead, lead mineral, maybe sericite, anglesite, I, I don't know. Um, this is one I picked up when I was there. Um, just, just about four weeks, four or five weeks ago, native copper in one of the pieces. Really nice specimen. But that's a big piece of rock. It's uh, nearly four centimeters, and that's a 
um, a two millimeter image across there. Native copper again. Um, a strange one, this for this place, pyromorphite. I, this specimen is, I think that's one or two pieces. We were walking up that track and my daughter bent down and picked this, this bit of rock up and this was on it. And now we can't figure out no way, that there's no pyromorphite on showing on the, um, the, the smelter at all. No, no, none of the rocks have any, anywhere near like this, but they used to bring pack horse trains over from the other mines to be smelted. So I guess this stuff has fallen off. And so you got wolfenite and pyromorphite on this one bit of rock and another bit the same. The other mine, barrel mine, there's a little, it's a big mine. This is a, a big area, but very little on it. It's mainly primary minerals and you get mainly just uh, iron and, and a little bit of lead. So that, that's the barrel mine uh, dump and you get calcite, quartz, one of the main things you get in there. Um, Sphalerite, not very good, but I, I thought I'd put it in just to show what it's like. Um, Sphalerite again. Right, the next valley over now, you've gone over to the next side and you're on the side of Derwent Water, the big, one of the big, big lakes in the Lake District, it's Derwent Water. And there's a range of um, the, the hill called Catbells, which runs um, north to south along the edge of Derwent Water. And uh, it's a fairly high bit of ground. And you, you come up from down the bottom, follow this track up, up Catbells, and then you carry on up this way to Maiden Moor. That's if you're walking the route. But we're interested in this place, which is um, Old Brandy Mine. And um, back in 2001, we had a foot and mouth epidemic in, in the UK. And we had a two weeks holiday up there. And all these roads, we could drive through them so they had red tape on all sides of the road so you couldn't actually stop and do anything that there was one place just down off screen here where they had um a land rover part and the sheep were walking back and forth across here but then this this track was open so myself and martin gale went up here and we walked up this slope just to see what what we could find um initially back in 1976 i found fluorite on this dump here and in, in the bracken on this bit. Um, that's looking down the other way. So the, 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 the park, park area is just around the corner here. And yeah. Um, so that's, that's Derwent Water looking up to the jaws of Burrowdale. Um, Castle, Castle Crag is just this bit up here. A surprise view and then over the back towards Helvellyn and other, the other lake mountains. That's the, uh, the slope. Up the hill and in this we found um mainly pyromorphite strangely pyromorphite but at the very top up here um under the grass lift the grass up and you find some very nice fluorite crystals um this wall here this wall running along here was built freshly um, around about 2000 and I was walking along just minding my own business and I saw that there was a couple of areas on this part of the wall where there were some stones raised up. I had a closer look and they were actually um, pyromorphite um, rocks. So I, and I, I liberated two or three from my collection. That's looking back down. In, so you got over this side, you've got, that, that's the Blencathra Saddleback Mountain and this is Skiddaw around this side. So that's that's Basin uh, Derwent Water Lake. That's from the the car park up towards the mine, and it's a fairly it's a good climb. Didn't notice it walking up, but when you turn around and try and come down again, you notice it. So this is me now sat up on top of um, Maiden Moor, looking back down the valley. Beautiful. Right, this is the old fluorite from 1976. From them dumps at the bottom of the hill. This is the one I got 10, 20, 20 years ago from that, that area at the top. Another one. It, this one's got some sort of coating on it. I can't couldn't get it off. But these are this is the pyromorphite from the wall, and this is these are off the dump. Also, you get quartz. You get a little bit of sericite, but I didn't. I haven't photographed that. 
Coming on further down, if you follow up through Burrowdale and you go around, as so you're going up over the Honister Pass, and there's a little valley go up called the Seathwaite. And Seathwaite is where the uh, the first graphite was was mined um, for, for for pencils and, and lead back, and, and they actually had um, I think uh, German mi German miners came over to mine the um, the ore for Queen Elizabeth, and they had guards on every every road and every access road. And these are the old dumps. You can see them just in the on the hillside here. So the, the Seathwaite farm is just here. And you get up up this gully and on these, these dumps. And you can still find material on there today, apparently. But over here, you can see the, the Honister Slate Quarry. And this is the Honister Pass going up from um, the, the Newlands Valley up over to Buttermere on the other side. There's a close up of the dumps and as they went up the hill um, and they also they were very quite restricted but the, the material is that's a, one of the pieces of graphite I actually picked up and brought home um, another another bit there but it's, it's not very pretty but it's a, a, a fairly unique mineral you do get calcite um, if you're lucky you get some some, some of the rock has, has these crystalline calcite in them and I, that one I've got dolomite on, but it's probably calcite anyway. But it's a it's about um, uh, eight eight or nine inch specimen that one. Florence mine. So I've now gone down south now, down below to the virtually to the southern part of the Lake District, and, and then virtually virtually out of the the mining area. And this is the Florence mine um, as it was three or four years ago. This is now a museum and an art centre. This is the main head frame, and this little gully running down through here is the entrance to the um, incline, which is um, a 300 metre long incline down to the collecting areas. Um, these, these these are now getting a bit derelict. Apparently, they they aren't as good as they aren't as good as they are in this picture. But this was this was the Norfolk Group. Um, down there in about 1993 or four, I think. Here's Mr. Belson. No, Richard. This is um, when you're actually down in there and you're, you're, the vein is exposed in a few places and they let you pick up material from the floor, or they did in them days. And so I, I picked a few bits of uh, hematite up. Um, Bit of calcite in it as well, bit of barite. Um, quite quite interesting material. Um, calcite, quartz, uh, quartz and calcite. A bit further across the hill, the, the valley, you come to Kelton and North Burton mines at Lampu, um, which is you're coming around a little bit north again now. So these these are the two areas. We've got this one here. I think this one is um, uh, Kelton Fell. And this one is not Burton Fell. And they're just two areas that have been worked for, for the iron ore. And when I first went there, I actually walked along this track and along this, this line. This is an old railway line. And I found some bits and pieces of uh, hematite. Um, again, nothing very pretty, but it's just specimens for the location. This nice, but these are quite nice. These are the other vitroidal even so it's very, very nice. A very unusual feature in the iron district is um, Kinnerside mine at Cleetermoor, where there's um, there was lead. And these dumps here, the, the two areas we collected from, and um, the Cleetermoor and Egremont are down, just down this road here, they're in the, this, this direction. This is the dumps as they were in 2013. We took a party of um, German friends over for a, for a week's collecting and uh, we got permission to go on. And these are the, the farmer and his granddaughter. And I think that's Dick standing there. But there, we, there's, I think there's about eight or probably 10, 12 of us in, in total. And we, had the, we did a complete trip around um, the area. Um, that's Einhard Kloist, for those who know him. But you get Wolfenite and Pyromorphite are the two main things you get that you can find there. 
Um, Sarah's site is a bit bit patchy, but you can find it. Um, and but the, the, the real nice one there is these um, elongated barite crystals, and both they're, they're quite nice. They, they they do fracture a little bit, so you, you don't always get a clean specimen. But you also got these little tiny squat things as well. Interesting, interesting little pieces. Further across now, you go up over the Hard Knot Pass and down in the, towards, towards, back towards Windermere, and you come to Coniston Mine. Um, Coniston Mine, again, the walk up is about a mile and a half walk up from the village that, down to the right. And the area around this part here is where the, there's a smelter area. This up there is the Coniston Mines, and I think that's Paddy End Mine, probably. Um, nothing much on it at all, a little bit of um, calcite, a little bit of ser um, yeah, not, nothing much at all. Not, but the main area was, we, where we collected was on this, this slag dump. Well, if you, it was this area around the bottom. That's the old smelter. Um, I did a little bit of research on this, and that was, that was actually built in about 1903. It was never, never used. It ran one lot of slag through it. And then the um, market fell, the, the bottom of the market fell out of the, uh, the, the slag industry and the mining industry, and that was never actually used. And so it never produced much in the way of um, metal. These are the, well, I've, I've got this down as Coniston mine, but I think that's probably Paddy End mine. Um, as I said, the dumps are pretty barren for such a big area with nothing on it. That's looking back down the valley towards the, the lake and where you park the vehicles at the bottom there. So this this is the coming, this is the youth hostel here. And um, this is the area where the slag was. So this is the old smelter. And um, that's probably Martin Gale there. But we just picked up a few bits and pieces of slag from this. And Martin went back um, a couple of years later and um, was asked to leave because um, apparently that had been made a triple SI and the people in the youth hostel didn't like us being there. So we were out that they were asked to leave. Um, so we, we got a few bits out of it, but it's very, very little collecting done on that site at all. Um, the interesting thing is that these big, large slag bowls that are about three or 400 yards away from the, the, uh, the, the main buildings and the main area, and they are quite huge. There's an S-wing hammer. So you can see the size of these things. Um, a whole area of them. How they've survived this long, I've got no idea. Because that, well, they are a bit heavy, but so what do we find there? You get um, from the slag, you get the most most brock and tight crystals, cotylite, cuprite on some sort of slag material. I've called this fogerite, which is this rusty brown stuff. Gypsum is quite a lot of gypsum hang, um, ar around in the material as well. Uh, and langite, they, they're very nice, pretty little langite crystals. And a malachite, probably malachite. Native copper. And serpurite. Right, moving on from there, now you go follow out, out of Conniston, back down the uh, the 595 to the A6, the old A6, and follow that up towards, back up towards Penrith, and you come to the Sharp Quarry. Um, Sharp Quarry was worked. I went in there in 1980 and 1981, and we collected from, from uh, uh, God knows where. I can't even find the place not now in there. But this is a, a, a modern... Um, Google Earth picture, and I, I, I drove past this the other week, and it's gone full tilt again. <clears throat> Back in 2005 and six, we were able to walk up here and collect on the very top of this, on, on a bench at the very top. And uh, from there we found, that's us going in there on this particular day. So this is the bench we collected on, and you just, there, there's a, a, a pegmatite which has come to the surface and when you break open the, the material inside it, you get the um, um, the, the free titanium minerals, um, rutile, um, annotation, brookite. Martin? 
Yes. Um, there's, there's two sharp quarries, isn't there? There's pink and the blue. Yeah, there's the sharp pink and the sharp blue. The sharp blue I've not put on this talk because I've only I've been there once, but it's just a garnet, mainly a garnet um, location. It's it's not in this talk, but this was this was the sharp pink quarry. This is I, we didn't find nothing much on this stuff. It was just big bits of rock. Now this was collected in 1980. This is barite in the Coxkill barite, but you can see on there I didn't notice this till a few years later. Little tiny fluorite crystals, um, all all running all through this. But this there is one of the uh, brookites and the, and the rutile, crisscross rutile. Again, sprays of brookite. Close up of an anatase crystal. And then also on there, it needs a, a close up of the fluorite. So I, I actually was given a spec, given some, some, I was left some material two or three years ago by a friend who died. And when I got the stuff back, it was material I'd given him initially when I collected it, looked at it, and that was, that got some, there's this lovely little lilac purple fluorite crystals in it. So I, Got that in my collection. And you get these appetite crystals growing as well. There are other things in, but I've not actually seen anything to, to, to photograph other than what you've now seen now. <clears throat> it's mainly those four or five different minerals. Right, so we've got the A6 to Penrith, turn right on the A66, and about four or five miles you come to Appleby, the village of Appleby. Up in the hills north of Appleby, there's a, another series of mines, the Hilton and um, Merton mines. Um, so the, this Hilton village is, or the, is down this, this way. This again, this is another two, two and a half mile walk in. And the, the area you collect from, well, this used to be, well, they used to call this the Amber, Amber Hill. But there was a big storm four or five years ago that washed the whole lot away. But I went, when I was collecting up there in 1881, we would come up to this, we walk up to this bit, and then so there's the, the escarpment, and you've got a level going there, which is the, the, the high level, Dow Scar high level, and then another level around this side, which is the middle level. I went in the middle level in 1980, and this one in 1981. And so you have to walk all the way up, get to here, up this, and up this, there's a zigzag path go up, so you get to these two levels. And that's this is us starting to climb up. It's, it's, it's quite steep. But the walk back, <laughs> this is just a picture of um, me on, I don't know who took this one, it's on the wall. Uh, I was just, at, you, you look for little pockets. There's, there's no there's no deads, all the stuff was, was dragged out, but um, you, you look for little tiny holes in the, in, in the, uh, in the, the, the rock and just try to expand the holes to find the specimens. And this was us contemplating, that's me back with full, full hair and full beard back in um, 1981. We're looking back down the valley, <laughs> an horrendous walk, especially with a rucksack full. But that was worth the effort. I, 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 this particular time in 81, I spent all day in, in the, uh, the mine, not found much at all, really. And then I, I was two of the guys had gone and further in and were looking for some calcite. So I stayed just a matter of maybe 20, 30 meters from the the, the entrance, and I, I found this little tiny hole um, right on the the, the the floor where the, the floor meets the wall. And I, I had a, a a big chisel with me, and I put the chisel into this hole, and that, that's about an 18-inch chisel, and it shot right up to the hill. And I thought, oh. So I then enlarged the hole and got my arm in and I moved my arm backwards and forwards, up and down. And all I was pulling out was floaters of fluorite and barite. And this is the, one of the better ones. A little, it's a small, um, maybe a centimetre, one and a half centimetres spike on another bigger, crisp, bigger, bigger specimen. But the fluorites from there are, are, are stunning. Uh, this is all at the one pocket. And the barite as well. Small, you even get the you get micro in there. There's barite with um, with that rosacite on them. 
Again, the rosacite on, on this one. And then the cerocyte on, on the fluorite and the cerocyte on these two, these two bits. Um, the galena is on the, the, the other quartz, but very small crystals, quite, quite pretty micromounts. And then you go up over the hill, up over the, the there's a range of mountains called the, there's the cross fell, um, which the Pennine Way follows up, up to Weirdale, and you get the small cluff mine in Nenthead. And again, the village of Nenthead is just here. There's all the, the business, all the offices that are around here. This is an old part they, they renovated at some point, and there's a, the entrance into the mine is somewhere, in, I think, in this area. Um, it's hard to tell. You can't really see it on here. It might be this one down here. It's somewhere in this area. Um, they, they, they made this into some sort of museum um, about 15, 10, 15 years ago. And this is how it looked when we were there in 2006. They sort of put back what they, what they could, how they thought it was. But, uh, that's, the, that's the way in, anyway, off, off that track. And um, it takes about probably, it takes about an hour and a half to get from here to the actual sphalerite collecting chamber. And when you get inside, you're confronted by this. You think, hmm, interesting. But it's on a swivel. These, these two brackets here uh, act as a swivel. And you just push this over and walk underneath it. These photographs are all taken by a friend of ours called Robbie Selly. Um, on this particular day in 2006, we did a lot of, there's quite a lot of these. I'll go through them fairly quickly. There's quite a lot of them, but they actually used all the deads to build, make these brick linings for the for all the tunnels. This is the Vale Montaigne, a, a Flemish or Belgian group. The trackway goes in, and then, there's, then you get to a collapse where you have to then walk down through the deads. Um, and it, it's a, a, a bit of a tortuous route, and even worse coming back with a bag full of sphalerite, but yeah, this is this is down through the deads. So you've got these little tunnels running through, very low. Um, some areas are you've got like a coffin level there been, been took out of it. There's Martin Gale in there for scale. There's a track there going again through. But this is in what they've got an area called Wheel Flats, and there's a big, huge slab over your head, and you go through this hole and carry on through. We were just stopping here for a to have a bite to eat. Again, the very low ceilings on, on the, the tunnels, but you go down through these flats. You can carry on down through, through, all the way through, through brick lined arches. Beautiful material. Again, all the deads are all stacked up on the sides. That's, I think that's Dick, that one. And you come to a wooden door. It just goes through, carry on through. It's the same on the other side. Again, all the dead stacked over these, these arches. How they, how they stayed up there all this time, no idea. Um, they got an ore chute coming down through one of the levels. And you come out to an area called, they call this the ballroom, because apparently back in... Uh, late Victorian times, about 18, 1890, 1898, they had a, um, the, the management put on, on a, a party for all the local dignitaries. They drove me on the train and they had this area and they called it the ballroom, ballroom flats. And the, the next picture will show you the actual size. And Robbie's managed to get this thing lit up for the photograph. And he did this by carrying in a one, one, one and a half million watt um, candle watt lantern and did it on a, on a about a 10 minute time delay and just painted the, the area with his, with, his, um, with, his, with his torch. Opened the shutter up and just painted the, the area in. Real, a wonderful technique. But that, that's ballroom flats. And then from there you go back out and you get to the area Right, this is um, preparing to go across this. This is the hydraulic shaft, which is a, about an 80, 80 foot shaft running down there. And it's just a single rail goes across it. 
which is one of the old rails. And we've actually got someone, we, we did tie people on to go across this one back in 81. But when we were there in the 2006, we didn't bother too much. Um, you don't fall off because it's a, it's a wet drop down there. And apparently Richard Barstow was in there once. And he, he started to fall off and he let his rucksack go. And that's down in the bottom here somewhere. There's, there's the shaft looking down, and you're going across this little tiny rail. But once you're on the other side, you get into the um, the chamber where the, the sphalerite is collected. There's a big, huge pocket off. You go in and climb up into the pocket and just sit on your backside and just pick up the stuff out of the ceiling, off the floor, and you get these beautiful um, sphalerite specimens. I think you still get into this, and I think they still let you go in here, but you have to do it all officially and go through the, the right channels. But you get the um, Dolomite, Galena, Calcite, Galena. Right. You go a little bit further across, a little bit south of, uh, of Nenthead is Tynebottom, Garrigal and Tynebottom Mine. Tynebottom Mine is um, another interesting one you can get into for, for cobalt minerals. And there's the river, there's, there's Garrigal Village. and we park our vehicles on this, this this road and walk up this track, which is the Pennine Way, and we go down this hill by this tree, and then we go in. And uh, that was the, the crew who went in that day. There's the way in. Plenty of water coming out. This is coming down and trying to get into it. When you get inside, one of the first things you see is this water rushing through the side of the wall. But that's that's all okay. Um, stalactites are, are, are coming off the ceiling everywhere. You can see the, the cobalt in the purple in the ceiling. Um, again, you've got the calcite flowstone everywhere. And, and you work on these little tiny thin layers of, of, of calcite and quartz and, and, and shale, and you're looking for little tiny patches of, of purple. This was interesting. This was a big stalactite. It's about a metre by a metre and a half hanging out of the, from the ceiling. And there's actually a hole in the floor where the, the, the liquid had dripped its way through. <clears throat> it's a really huge thing. This is looking back out to the, to the exit. You can see what it's like as you go on out. So it's a, a fairly easy, easy walk in. But you get calcite. Calcite, nice, nice calcite, scale the usual calcite crystals. Aragonite with a little pink hue on it. <coughs> Erythrite, that's the best one I've got. One only. Lovely, very much. That's a micro, it's about a millimeter across there. Erythrite again. Again. Quartz with a coating, some sort of coating on it. An unknown blue one and a really rotten fluorite. Um, I think this might be the last location now. Parkhouse Quarry. It's it's on the, the on the on the last talk. I I ended up at um I think the um Carrick End Mine or Queen Mine on the the left hand side of the Eden Valley. This is on the right hand side of the Eden, Eden Valley. And um, we were driving past this, uh, back in 1987, we did this, and we were driving along this road, this track here, and we saw some workmen at this gate. And we said to them, can we go in and look at the quarry? And they said, yes, but you've got to be out by midday. So we drove up, parked up somewhere up here, walked into the quarry, and we're collecting away merrily in this area. And all of a sudden, this, this guy with... Um, a gamekeeper walked up with his deer stalker hat on, gun under his arm, a dog at his side. What are you doing here? Collecting minerals. Who told you you could come in? Well, there was two men down at the gate. They said we could come in, but we've got to be out by midday. He says, they're council workmen. They had no right to tell you to do that, but you're okay. You can stay until midday and then you've got to go. So that's what we did. Um, but that was on, that was this, this area in there. And again, you get these big boulders which have fallen off. And this, this quarry was worked when they built the M6 motorway from 
up through Cumbria towards Carlisle, they used this quarry for the road stone, apparently. And um, so you can't see them on this picture, but there are pockets of aragonite crystals hanging up in on, on the sides, which is just too, but these, these rocks also contained it. And uh, so there's, there's the aragonite you get, which is quite, quite nice. Um, this is probably just calcite, this one. But also in there, you get malachite, which is very unusual, very strange. And then this last few shots, um, I'd call it street art in Keswick, but some budding entrepreneurs found a use for material that they picked up on the dumps on this Ravensworth Hotel. And they've they put the um, all these these heads of the, the, their posts, filled them with, with minerals. I'm amazed they're still there. But uh, that's about the end of it. Yeah, that's the lot. So, not too bad. I thought it was going to take longer than that. I did very well. Um, that certainly gives me a much better appreciation of some of the specimens that I've got in my collection that I didn't actually collect myself. Um, and the amount of effort that must have gone into getting them out. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, especially yeah. small clue. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, small, exactly. small clue. Yeah, small clue. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, hell of a, well, hell of a walk. I, so I went in there in 1980-81, and it took us a, a good hour and a half to get from the entrance to the to the, the hydraulic shaft. Yeah. Mm, There's wow. one particular place called Hetherington's Crawl, and Dick <laughs> know what I'm, and Richard know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and, I know what um, you're talking about. When, yeah. when you, you go into it, and it, but, but when when the, the, there was an area where the railway, where, where the, the track was collapsed, the, the the ceiling came down and collapsed onto the track, so they had to go down through through the flats, through wheel flats, and. Uh, Part of the, the way through, what they call Harrington's Crawl, and you basically go in there, bent over, and the, the ceiling of the crawls on is touching your back, and you're just about walking um, forward, shuffling forward as best you can for about 150 yards. And you get out the other side, and you drop back onto the track again, so it's, it's easy again then. But coming back out, when you try to drag a rucksack out full of spellerite and glean and God knows what, it's a, a different matter. Yeah. We had what they called, we got a cow tail. We, uh, we put a, a belay belt on with a cow tail on it and slung the rucksacks on that and then dragged it on your belly. So you, you're actually walking forward with this thing underneath you and trying to pull it through the, the tunnels. Worth it in the end. Worth it in the end. But uh, okay. yeah, it's interesting. It's been some nice, some ni nice, nice times. Um, one, one question I have, I think. Was it Coniston with the slag uh, area? Yeah. Um, I was there in 1994, and I'm pretty sure I actually was able to drive in. Yeah, they, they did allow you to drive in. Actually, yeah. Martin Gale went back the second time. When, when he got slung out by the, 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 um, uh, the people in the, in the youth centre, uh, um, and they, they, were, they were actually digging on the, 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 the dump that area, and they were told it was triple S R. They shouldn't be there. They got to get out, and he actually drove his van up. But the track was very, very rough. Yeah. yeah. But um, I, I so, mean, I've, I've got the, the, the unfortunate part is he, he was with another guy, um, who Martin gave all the, 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 the slag to, and then this guy had had a fire in his shed, so all the slag got re-smelted again. And that was absolutely rubbish the second time round. So the only the only material now which is from that place I know of in the world is in my collection and in my garage. There's, there's no one else I've heard heard of, of anyone been collecting up there. There's the, no reports of it anywhere of anyone collecting it. I've got a bit. You've got a little bit, yeah. I, I've got a bit. But, uh, what is yeah. So what is the collecting status on these sites today? Um, 
most of the mm. ones you've seen today, you can get onto and pick up. They're, they're nearly all now, a lot of them are, are protected under this triple SR, which is sites of scientific interest, uh, or special, mm. special sites of scientific interest. And you can actually go on them still and walk them, um, but you aren't really supposed to, well, you aren't supposed to take a hammer on for a start off, but you, if you pick up a, if a piece happens to stick to your finger when you put your hand on the floor to stop yourself falling over, um, it's okay. No, you aren't, you aren't supposed okay. to click. Um, places like Kinderside, they're all on somebody's land, so you've got to ask permission if you can find somebody. I was lucky because I, when I first went to Kinderside mine, I, I drove around and I found this at the farm. I went in and asked the guy, he said, go where you like. He said, mind, mind the holes, don't fall down the holes. So I said, oh, fine, thank you. And yeah, He's but, a bit worried about the cows, cows wasn't he? Falling yeah, down the holes. Yeah. yeah, but the last time we were there, I don't think anyone found any pyromorpha. I certainly didn't find anything. No. Um, but the, the I've, I've got several pieces of nice little micro wolfenites growing in the pyromorpha, which is very, very strange for that area. There's no more lead around anywhere. No. Mm. It's just an odd, odd occurrence. Um, where, Thank you. Where you found the um, the pyromorpha and the wolfenite that uh, it was likely to have fallen off a truck. There's a similar situation in um, in Tasmania, in uh, near Zeehan. So you've got all of the crocoite deposits in Dundas, but there was uh, the Zeehan shelters, the smelters is where the um, crocoite was shipped because it was used as a flux. Yeah. And you used to be able to walk along the old trackway there and find bits of crocoite too. So. Well, I, you know, do you know, do you know J Jason Smith from, uh, I think he's in, in the group sometimes. He, I knew Jason back, or me and Dick knew Jason back in 1997, yeah. we first met him. And he, mm. he lived about, mm. I think about, just about, about four or five miles away from, from the foot mine in Kings Mountain. And he, he got a complete suite of minerals, virtually, and just walking the tracks around the area. Absolutely fantastic, you know. But uh, yeah, it's, um, yes, yeah, so some of these tracks are quite good. I was given, I was we, Dick and I were given some specimens from um, the, um, the 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 the, um, the Black Forest area around near, near Sasback from a quarry, and um, the guy who gave them to us says, "You are just dip them in vinegar and dissolve out the calcite a little bit, and you find beautiful little tiny microbes of um, black agarine." And uh, little orange, yellow orange garnets, very little tiny, just picked up from debris on the tracks around the areas. So you haven't always got to get onto uh, the mines to find stuff. But it's getting very hard now. The, the collecting, I mean, we're off down to, I said, down to Devon for about, well, I think we're down there about 15, 14, 13 days now. Now the, now the symposium's cancelling. I'll get back till the, till the Friday. So, um, uh, we're, we're, we're staying. We're actually only about a, a less than less than half a mile from the Meldon uh, British Railway ap and Aplite quarries. Um, the, the, there's a Ghana area um, up at Bellstone Consoles where we, we collected green 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 uh, Ghana in the past, but we just don't know what the access is going to be like. Uh, the areas are just. You, you, I, I went to Wales two years ago. And um, everywhere I went, the you couldn't get anywhere. That that all the dumps that had been taken away, or you couldn't access anything. They'd got other things happening on it. They bike um, bike tracks, BMX tracks, um, adventure parks, all sorts of things happening on them. But you, you couldn't go and collect on them. But uh, watch this space. We'll see what happens next. <laughs> good fun, though. Good fun. Absolutely. Um, does anybody else have any questions of Martin? No. All right. Well, on that basis, then we'll we'll close the session, and I think I'll have a chat to you separately about whether or not we can do something for two weeks' time. Um, and if anybody else knows of even people that are not currently on the call that wouldn't mind doing a presentation. Um, to maybe have a chat to me about it as well, and we'd see if we can organise something. And uh, yeah, on that basis, I'll see you all in two weeks. Okay. Yep.
If we if we aren't there, you'll know we'll, you'll know why. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. 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 Thank you.